This is Tiago Pivovarczyk and Jeff Taylor of New York Art Forensics. And this is a Jackson Pollock. Or at least it looks like one. But it's actually a fake. Here's how they figured it out. Today we will perform all the steps necessary to determine its authorship. Jackson Pollock was an American painter that painted from the early 20s to the 1950s. He's best known by the drift or core paintings that he did from 1947 to the time of his death in 1956. Pollock's drift paintings are considered his best period, so a good-sized, well-preserved Jackson Pollock, it can go for over a hundred million dollars. There is a lot of claims of Jackson Pollock drip paintings and our laboratory was able to identify over a hundred fakes. So we can say that we found more fakes than there are authentic Jackson Pollocks out there. We received this painting by a client that chose to remain anonymous. We're going to call him Sidney. The first step when we receive a painting, we're trying to establish something called the provenance. Provenance is a chain of ownership and custody of an artwork from the contemporary ownership all the way back to its manufacturing. Where this painting came from, what is the story behind it, is there anything that shows the history of this artwork? So this is one of the most fascinating documents that I've ever seen. This is a document to explain why Sydney should have a Jackson Pollock. Most forgeries, there are not as much forgeries of confidence, but forgeries of documentation. This is problematic in all these different ways. The facts has no number. Dr. Armin Hershkovitz cannot be referenced. There's no record of a tear gallery in Dover, New Jersey. Then he says he acquired this painting in 1955 after Pollock died, but he didn't die until 1956. So for all of these reasons, this is an incredibly unreliable and deceitful document. The next step will be we try to find a, a match for the artwork. Jackson Pollock paintings are specifically hard to look for matches because of the nature of the image. Most of the sources are in printed material in the Catalogue Raisonné, which is the comprehensive catalog of works for a given artist. This painting has no match. The next step is a close-up visual analysis. So we're looking close to the painting to try to find anachronistic materials and techniques. Something that would be uncharacteristic from a given outer or a given time. It's a very, very thin layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah look at how many, how many colors I count that aren't in the drip layers. It's very hard to prove there is something is, but it's easier to find things that are out of place, things that should not be there. Look at these underlying colors. We got a yellow, a green, and neither of them appear in the drip patterns. That's done with a brush. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's rather strange because when Pollock starts doing the poured painting, he really doesn't brush much anymore. Yep. So there's no signature here. A lot of the works going into the market in very controversial ways are not signed. And we suspect that someone is trying to mitigate whatever legal repercussions trying to imply that an unsigned work is not a forgery per se. As I say, it's a next level to take the step to sign an artwork. Now you see here, Tiago, I got two holes right here, just that distance. Mm. And they're repetitive. You have a series of smaller holes and that indicates that this canvas was a certain point stapled. And staple canvases would not be a thing on 1956. 
There's something, do you see this dirt here? Yeah, that's not gonna nasty. It's being aged through a series of processes to look older. It's like they spilled something on this through carelessness or not through carelessness? You can see by the marks on the back how it was dabbed with a tea bag. And if you actually come really close and smell it, you can smell tea still. The surface is being sprayed with nicotine to emulate ages of exposure to smoking. But the canvas is actually in really good state of conservation. It hasn't really shredded the way uh, the canvas starts to unravel at its edges yeah. over time. There's like some punctual damage that is here. Yeah. It should be like all over like this. Then the next step will be photography. So we want to see if there's any underdrawings or sketches under the paint. You never know, sometimes the canvas was reused. Do you see that, that squared green there? Ah, uh, yes. In this case, instead of finding underdrawing, actually, we found that this canvas was reused from a prior picture that had very regular geometric shape, which is very uncharacteristic from Pollock as well. Now we get out the UV light. If you're going to analyze the material aspects of the artwork, we want to be sure that we're looking at relevant parts of it. So we examine it with ultraviolet light to try to look at the original parts of the painting. Normally all the restorations would show up, but none of the restorations show up any different as if the thing was done all at the same time. See, so look, here, this cut. There is a big patch on the back, and this ripping is held together by a patch and it's gluing it together. You see there's two little canvas threads mm -hmm. are actually like loose. And the restoration was uh, made in a completely substandard way and it doesn't seem to be fulfilling the purpose of a proper conservation. The X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, that's the next step. This handy device that looks kind of like a Star Trek phaser is a really outstanding tool in the field of art forensics. I'm actually emitting a small amount of x-rays onto the surface of the painting. It's exciting the electrons in the pigments there and that allows this to identify what elements are present. It shows us that we have titanium on it, which is natural from titanium dioxide white pigment. It's a very common material from the 1930s. For a lot of our cases, titanium is the determining factor, and it has tripped up more forgers than any other element. So if this were purporting to be a painting by Degas, and we found the titanium, immediately we would know, no way. In this case, however, by the time Pollock is working, titanium is a widely available white, so to find it in Pollock's work is not surprising. In fact, it's well documented that his works do contain titanium. Titanium white was already available in the 1950s. From that, we move on to microscopy. So Tiago is going to be taking tiny, non-destructive, fragmentary samples of different bits of paint. This process is mostly used for organic materials. With those, we would then be able to test both the pigment and the binder. We're looking for what is the kind of paint used. We we'll try to take a few samples from each color and then we use the Rama spectrometer. We put in a microscope slide and we shine a laser over it. And then this laser bounces back inside the machine in a slightly different color from the original color of the laser. That can tell us an idea of what we're looking at. 
and we found mostly acrylics. Although the binder known as acrylics did exist at the time Pollock was alive, in this one, the specific variant of acrylic did not exist. It only started being manufactured in the 1960s. For more than 100 years, scientists have just been looking at tiny fragments of paintings under microscopes. And this allows us to really make a visual identification based in metals and uh, tiny fragments of, of mineralogy. So there are studies um, regarding Jackson Pollock paintings that describe the type of debris found in his paintings. Look at that. Either somebody dropped this in a mud puddle or they directly applied this stuff. And there is a specific type of sedimentary rock and dust that he would spread on his work. I think it's a piece of insulation. That's what I'm saying. I don't even can't even tell what that is. But on this case, we analyzed the debris and dust uh, embedded on the painting, and it seems to be debris from drywall, uh, which is inconsistent with other Pollock's works. Conclusion. A Jackson Pollock, the technique per se, there is not much of a mystery. So it is our opinion that this would not qualify as a Jackson Pollock painting. As I say, if the deal is too good, there's something wrong.